This is a short presentation explaining how the NICE guidance on intravenous fluid therapy will be implemented at the Great North Children's Hospital. We're going to first look at complications of inappropriate or unmonitored IV fluids. We're going to look how the guidelines try and reduce these complications. And we're going to explore how we plan to implement the guidelines. When poorly in hospital, children's electrolyte balance and fluid balance can be affected. And problems with abnormal electrolytes or problems with fluid overload and hypovolemia can be made worse by inappropriate or unmonitored IV fluids. Electrolytes of particular importance are potassium and sodium. There have been recent patient safety alerts because rapid changes in sodium have resulted in neurological injury and death in children and inappropriate intravenous fluid therapy has contributed to these adverse events. The NICE guidelines state that for maintenance fluid, initially isotonic fluids, which in electrolyte composition most closely resemble normal human blood, should be used. Potassium should also be added routinely unless there's a contraindication, like renal failure. Use and ease should be monitored daily to guide fluid prescribing. However, for lots of reasons, children might need alternative fluid prescriptions. If this is the case, decisions will be led by the responsible medical team. Unless deemed clinically inappropriate, weight should be monitored daily and any changes noted. Fluid balance charts should be updated with running totals and also daily totals and overall fluid balance. As well as raising awareness through this video, we will also be adapting fluid charts to try and help keep within these guidelines. The new IV fluid prescription charts now contain an area where maintenance doses can be totaled, where alternative fluid plans can be justified if necessary, as well as the normal space to write a prescription. If rates of fluid administration or type of fluid is not in keeping with the guideline, for example fluids with different saline or potassium concentrations are used, the justification can be now clearly documented on these charts. In addition, fluid balance charts now have an extra section where weight can be recorded and compared to previous days to look for any differences or fluctuations in weight and prompts to calculate daily fluid balance have been made clearer. In summary, 0.9% saline fluids should be first line and fluid prescription charts should explain why this isn't the case in certain situations. Please ensure that weights and fluid balance totals are kept up to date and checked regularly. Applying the guidelines by using these interventions should help ensure the safety of children on intravenous fluid therapy at this hospital. Thanks very much for listening.